Short Range Transit Plan, presented by Emory. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. It's time again to update our annual short-range transit plan. And I have a, um, a few slides here and uh, a brief summary of this year's plan. The short-range transit plan, you may recall, and we reviewed it last year, is a primary planning document which guides the uh, routine decisions associated with operating the system. The document covers a five-year span. It's updated annually, uh, usually. And, the, and most importantly, the objective of the plan is to achieve the district's goals by following the mission statement. And that slide says that the mission statement appears below, but <coughs> on this slide, we don't have it below. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. We have it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this slide here is showing basically the, the basic outline of the plan, which is the same as last year. It starts with describing the system. We go into discussions on standards. We do an analysis. Uh, we talk about previous revisions. We have a recommended service plan, and then it uh, ends with the financial plan, and there's also a uh, glossary uh, with it. It has a lot of maps and uh, tables and graphs, and this is just an example of what's in the plan. The, uh, uh, this red uh, line here, that's the legal boundary of the transit district. Uh, this is the area uh, within that red boundary is where we get our population numbers from current COG. It includes all of the city limits of Bakersfield and then some of the adjacent unincorporated county areas. It's a confusing boundary because the annexations are confusing and we follow whatever the annexations are. We go into some of the ridership characteristics, uh, demographics. Those are, again, just some examples of some of the maps graphs that we have. And then the next section is a detailed analysis, a discussion of service and performance standards, and some of them are relating also to the Title VI uh, when we do any um, required service uh, equity analyses. And so you can see there's quite a list there of areas that are addressed. And then we also have standards for provision of service to, um, to new areas. Uh, because there's a, when there's requests for service to a new area, <clears throat> we want to look at different characteristics. And the density, of course, is really important. The, um, how dense a, an area is, the higher the density, the, more, uh, the better the chances for a successful uh, fixed route. And all of those characteristics are all addressed in that section. And then we, uh, we start going into the section that deals with the actual analysis from the past uh, fiscal year, last uh, fiscal year that um, ended. There's a full um, year's worth of data. And those are examples of some of the graphs of the pie charts. We uh, have rankings of the routes, which routes are the strongest, which are the weakest, based on uh, passengers per mile per hour and the operating ratio that's included uh, in the report. And then also, we're not forgetting about get -a -lift. We have graphs and statistics also uh, dealing with the uh, performance of get -a -lift. And then that uh, analysis uh, section uh, ends with uh, what, what I would call a snapshot of each route. It shows the map there and some uh, key uh, characteristics on the route's performance. And this, this is a table on the Title VI review. Whenever we're uh, looking at changes, we uh, need to all, always remember to look at the um, issues of equity and you might recall uh, some time back the board uh, affirmed the uh, definitions of the policies of major service change, all of that related to the uh, Title VI. 
And then we go into projections. Uh, this is a, an example of the table that's in there that uh, is all the miles and hours projections. And then this is also used for the, the budget and financial planning. And then the, we have the recommended uh, service plan, uh, which details the uh, recommended service uh, plans for the uh, five years. Year number one, of course, is the most important year because that's the year coming up, July 1st. Um, we just uh, reviewed those changes recently, and the board approved those changes. That includes the headway improvements on Route 61. And uh, most of the other changes are relatively uh, more minor uh, time point uh, adjustments. In year number two, we're looking at uh, adding evening service to the two rapid routes, the routes 21 and 22, Saturday and Sunday until 11 p.m. And the route 47 would be um, extended to the uh, Southwest Transit Center to try to capture uh, more trips as the trip generator there in Valley Plaza. <clears throat> and Route 62, the headways would be approved from hourly to uh, every half hour on weekdays. In year number three, uh, evening service would be extended to the Route 44 on Saturday and Sunday. 44 is one of our strongest routes. And 45, also one of the strongest routes, we would approve uh, the Monday uh, through Friday daytime headways uh, from 30 to 20 minutes. And the Route 47 weekend service would be operated. And in year number four, evening service ended on the three routes shown there, 47, 81, and 83. And then the last year, 41, an extension to a uh, morning drive if there's enough um, demand and uh, road structure in that area. And the 44, extending out to the White Lane, Buena Vista Road area. And keep in mind that since this plan is updated annually, we can always make changes. We can, like if something's in year number three now, maybe a year from now we might, conditions may change, whatever, we might want to bump it up to year number two. Or we could add something that's not on here right now. So it's an, an, it's an annual update. And then the final uh, chapter is the financial plan, and the board's already had an extensive um, discussion and workshop on the budget, and so uh, Stephen has provided tables there in that uh, section, which uh, outlines the uh, five-year horizon there on revenues, expenses, uh, funding uh, numbers. So that uh, pretty much completes my um, summary. The, um, Operations and Service Development uh, Committee, represented by um, Director uh, Para. Uh, we met uh, with her uh, recently and to review the plan. The um, uh, one discussion we had would be that in, when we do the update next year, we would <coughs> expand the discussion of the future BRT service, that's the bus rapid transit. You may recall the long range plan uh, had uh, Discuss the two rapid routes, especially uh, turning it to the BRT lines. And then also the um, catchment area for the um, uh, service. Uh, catchment area is the distance travel uh, to get to the bus routes. That some uh, studies have been done that show that you can uh, extend the catchment area without even extending routes. For example, you can. Um, do more bike transit um, interface. Uh, you can add park and ride lots where people can come from farther distances to catch the bus. And then another way would be improvements to pedestrian infrastructure. For example, you may have a route nearby, but there's a canal or railroad or, or highway that uh, prohibits people from just walking right across over to it. And if we could encourage things like trails, pathways, overpasses, things like that, then the catchment area would improve. They wouldn't have to go maybe a mile all the way around to try and get over the barrier. So we plan to have a, a little more discussion um, and emphasis on that next year. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, what's different from year to year? The difference is uh, 
in the um, statistics, in the analysis chapter, uh, we'll update it every year. Uh, for example, this fiscal year has not ended yet, but when this fiscal year ends, we will have all the new um, ridership and productivity and numbers and miles, miles, hours, and so forth. So that's updated every year. And then also there's um, changes in the, um, the budget, of course. Those numbers will, will be updated. And in the recommended service plan, any um, changes in what we uh, may be recommending for a service. So what is that from the previous transit plan to this one? Um, it would be from the previous one to this one. No, I want them to know what the information is. What has changed? Okay, uh, what, is that, what has changed? <clears throat> In the recommended plan, what has changed is we've added um, more service improvements. We've added um, more, I don't believe the previous one had um, much about Route 47. I think there was some information in there, but for example, uh, something new would be, uh, compared to last year, would be the extension to the uh, Valley Plaza on the Route 47. Uh, that, that's been added. And let's see what else. The, I believe we did have the Routes 21 in there last year for um, uh, improvements on uh, the, the weekends, the, the weeknights. I'm trying to think what else. I think there were there's a few others that we, um, I believe the, oh, the, well, the Route 41, that, that wasn't in there last year, that's been added, about the possible extensions farther east. So those are some of the examples of some of the um, changes from um, at least in the, the service. And of course, all the statistics that's been updated in the budget of the, the US uh, numbers. And then also, well, and then one other thing that was added um, in the previous year's plan, we didn't have any uh, maps uh, with any uh, demographics. And the maps, they're at a small scale because otherwise we'd have to have page after page of maps. That was also added uh, this year. And then every year, Kern Cog in May, they give us uh, their new population estimates in the district, so that also was updated. In fact, I, I expect us to finally hit the 500,000 number next year. I think we're at 492, so I bet we'll hit 500 next year. Okay. Thank you, Emory. I just wanted to, to thank, thank you for the work that you put into this document. I think it, um, uh, it's easily understood if you dive into it and look at the graphs and the, uh, the demographics especially. I, I think those were uh, a good addition to it. But also I wanted to just to let the rest of the board know this is a, it's a living document still. I mean, it's not it, like the Decatur uh, stop that we added wasn't part of the old um, or last year's five-year plan but because of public comment and and um, Emory's team of you know two I guess um, um, looking at at the data and, and realizing that they yes that there is possibility that that could capture more uh, riders and so we implemented that that new stop and we've got a lot of uh, good feedback from the the drivers that I talked to at the barbecue. You know, they said that the, the public is really um, happy about getting that that stop back. So um, the the document we're we're not. I don't want to say we're not held to this only. If we come up with other ideas or, or other suggestions that Emory thinks that is a good. Um, uh, is a, is a good suggestion that we go ahead and implement those plans, correct? Yes. Yeah, and, we, and we'll always have the, the public hearings, of course, uh, as necessary uh, for any major changes. Okay, we're good. I've got a question. I looked at page 125. I, this is service changes effective. Ten. I just don't understand it. I'm not questioning it. I just don't know quite understand. Page 125. I guess it really starts on 124. These are like the record of the service changes that have occurred per previous service revisions. 
Um, yes. And if, can you just explain, you know, I can see the routes, I understand the description of the change, but what is the rev, and rev MLS change per day percentage change? And then on the next page on 125, we've got a bunch of red. I'm just kind of curious what this all means. Yeah, that was the change in the, uh, the revenue miles. Uh, if, it's a, if it's in parentheses in red, it's meaning there was a decrease. And also the same thing for the uh, revenue hours. Oh, I see. So, so basically, these changes caused a reduction in the vehicle miles that we traveled and, and also the hours. I mean, yes, yes, at least on, on those routes. And the, we want to always do that because the, um, it's related to our definition of a major service change, 25% uh, of miles or hours being affected. So yeah, that chapter, that, that's just showing all the changes since the, the new system was started. You know, Understood. Thanks for helping me understand that. That's all my questions, thanks. Sure. Um, a couple things. <clears throat> um, what I looked at <clears throat> to review is a close to what this report is. So, I'm, I'm glad I was in committee. I'm glad you all got to review it. However, if you're going to send this to me, then please send me the whole thing. <clears throat> We'd um, be happy to do that, although last year we got a request to just send the executive summary, so we just sent the executive summary. Yeah, actually, we, we talked about that in the committee, that whether just at first I, I thought we would send the whole thing, but then it was... That's fine. So if this is the executive summary, all right, then that's fine. I'm the one that says send the executive summary, okay? What it doesn't have is what's different from this one to the previous one. It's not here. I, I don't know what I am. The purpose of the executive summary, in, from my point of view, is to read something and then say, on page such and such, then you look at the whole document and pick out the information that you want to either verify or to understand more, or that you might have questions about that you come to the board meeting with. Um, I didn't have the document to review, refer back to. And even if I had, um, I, I probably wouldn't have read the entire thing because um, what I was looking for in as a part of the executive summary is comparison from year to year, what's changed, that kind of thing. So I would recommend for go f forward on reports like this that we have, here's what we have, here's what's changed, you want to see the detail, look on page, whatever. And then we can go and look at that. Um, each one's committee is going to have maybe a different viewpoint of what they want to look at in here. Finance might have one viewpoint, maybe a ridership, route thing, whatever. But it would make it easier. That's all. Okay. The, the information is unbelievable. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to actually, because this is one of the things I really do like to look at is uh, the, the reports that you put out. I mean, they're fabulous. That's just what I like. We have one more question. Page 141. Funding projects for like the next one, two, three, four, five years. It's 2020, 19 to 20, got a large deficit. Do we have a big construction project there? Is that, a, is that our thought process on uh, moving our location? Or is that bus? Is that going to be a bus procurement? I'm not sure I can answer that question. Stephen would be able to tell you that. Um, I think um, it's probably the new facility. Okay. But I'll find out for you and get back to you.
I, I, that's I, all we could reasonably hope for. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> I, uh, I think this is a great report. I, I'm going to spend some time looking through the whole document, uh, study it, and if I have some more questions, I'll be happy to come back at the next meeting and ask them. Uh, the action tonight was uh, looking for approval, but it sounds like we may want to table that until the next meeting. It's coming out of committee for recommending approval, yeah, correct? Okay. Yes. Oh, committee. okay. You do have a recommendation. Yeah, we recommend. All right. We have a recommendation for approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Cindy, for your work on that. And Emery and your team. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item A.